Tyrannosaurus, one of the most terrifying predators of prehistoric times, could reach speeds of up to 50 kilometers per hour. The fearsome creature was equipped with 60 sharp teeth, each 30 centimeters long. Additionally, it possessed stereo vision, a visual ability that allowed it to spot its prey from a distance without being seen itself. However, what if all these adaptations of the famous King of Lizards seem trivial compared to the evolutionary tricks of other lesser-known creatures from the deepest past? Let's conduct our own excavations to find out how a half-reptile, half-pig, survived the most terrible cataclysm in Earth's history and likely even became the ancestor of humans. We will also discover which other ancient monsters literally had razor blades as teeth. In short, which animals from the past you have never seen. The animals we know well have absolutely crazy ancestors. The species we know today evolved only after the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs over 60 million years ago. It may sound strange, but the paleontological findings from that time are among the most unusual. For instance, there's a mammal called Doetacurus. The first representatives of this species appeared 2 million years ago, and died out only 8,000 years ago. At the same time, Doetacurus was a herbivore, and relatively harmless. Scientists believe it was the ancestor of today's armadillos. However, the modern descendants of armored quadrupeds weigh no more than 50 kRs, less than the tail of Doetacurus. Similar things happened with Megatherium, one of the largest mammals ever to live on Earth. Their oldest remains date back 20 million years, and the youngest are only 11,000 years old. A single adult could reach a length of 6 meters and weigh about 4 tons. When scientists first encountered the skeleton of a megatherium, they debated for a long time to which family it belonged. It seemed that there was nothing comparable on Earth at the time. However, someone eventually compared the paw of megatherium to the limb of a modern sloth, and the structure was practically identical. It turned out that giant sloths dominated the Earth millions of years ago. They were likely just as slow. When early humans started hunting megatherium, the giants simply couldn't escape fast enough. But other prehistoric monsters could repel any foe. The feathered Gastornis, which lived about 40 million years ago, was not much larger than a modern human. Yet this bird could handle a large mammal like a modern horse, let alone a smaller species. The beak of Gastornis was so wide that it could split its prey in half with a single motion. However, instead of wings, Gastornis had only tiny, underdeveloped limbs, meaning flying was out of the question. The same is true for the modern descendants of the primordial bird. Like ostriches and kiwis, they also do not strive to conquer the sky. And that's a good thing. But the next prehistoric animal has conquered a new environment. Ambulocetus lived about 50 million years ago, and was one of the first mammals to opt for a life underwater. Its elongated, streamlined body shape allowed it to move quickly there while its limbs resembled flippers that ended in ordinary webbed feet. This means that Ambulocetus could easily walk whenever it wanted, but at the sight of a predator, it literally sank to the bottom. Scientists believe that whales and dolphins evolved from these strange hybrids. However, unlike most other species, today's representatives of these species surpass their prehistoric ancestors in size and strength. Why did these huge animals evolve into tiny whales and dolphins? because their larger ancestors were simply devoured by the last gigantic sharks that ruled the ocean. It's hard to imagine a shark eating a prehistoric giant squid. Architeuthis is the largest squid that ever lived, almost twice the size of its modern descendant. The largest Architeuthis was almost 20 meters long and probably weighed over a ton. But even the smaller species had nothing to fear as long as they managed to escape into the darkness of the deep sea. However, not all prehistoric animals had teeth or claws to catch their prey. There were also herbivorous monsters that enjoyed the peace of the forest. With a long, thin neck, the giant sauropod could reach every corner of the forest without much effort. When the first paleontologists came across the remains of these animals, they could not believe that they were part of the same genus as their relatively small descendants. But that is indeed the case. We now know that Brontosaurus is simply a young Apatosaurus who became the king of the prehistoric era through a typo and a little imagination, and was just as dangerous as the herbivorous sauropods. The Velociraptor, despite its name, was no larger than a turkey, but that didn't stop it from becoming a real nightmare for other dinosaurs. Its beak was so sharp that it could cut almost any animal in half. But the worst thing was that the Velociraptor was an excellent hunter and hunted in packs. 
Scientists believe they could also attack humans because the first representatives of the Homo genus lived at that time and sometimes had to flee from predators. However, the greatest danger to humans were not these beasts, but tiny microbes that could cause infection. But we don't plan to cage them like the dinosaurs. Instead, we take a step further and look for a way to heal the wounds these monsters have left behind.